Do you want to create a macro like this? In this video, I'll show you exactly how to do so. You might think creating a macro is hard, but what if I told you it's actually really simple? All you need to do is to start small. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a very simple combo macro, and the game that I will be doing it on is the Strongest Battlegrounds. To start creating macros, you need to download either one of these three tools, TinyTask, AutoHotKey, or Python. In today's video, I'll be using AutoHotKey because it is the simplest to learn and it is also the program that I started off with. So installing AutoHotKey is actually a pretty straightforward process. Just go to any web browser, search up AutoHotKey, click the first link that you see, click the download button and download version 1.1 deprecated. And once you have the file, just double click it to install it. Once this screen appears, all you have to do is click Express Installation. So on my screen, it says Install as Additional Version. This is because I have a separate version of AutoHockey installed, I have version 2 installed. But because you don't have version 2, just click Express Installation. So I'm going to install this real quick. And once the screen is gone, just search up AutoHotKey and see if you have it installed. You should have something called AutoHotKey Dash. If you are a beginner and this is your first time trying to make a macro for anything, I suggest that you open up uh, Gemini or ChatGPT. It's a free AI thingy. I'm pretty sure you, you have heard of it and you have been using it for your schoolwork. Something about AI is that it makes coding a lot easier because you do not have to type the syntax yourself. You just need to know the logical flow and process of the code. What I mean when I say logical flow is what keys do I press after another, how long the delays are between each key and what I want to do, okay? So right now I'm using Hero Hunter. There's a lot of different combos but I'm going to be using the easiest combo that I know and the easiest one to micro as well. The whole combo goes 3 hits, uppercut, using number 1, side dash, hit number 3, hold left click, 1 dash, 1, 2, and then do this. This is the easiest combo that I know for Garo. Uh, as you can see, I don't really play this game a lot. So uh, that is all that I will be macroing today. So to get started with creating a macro, I suggest that you create a folder first for your macros. For me, I named it AutoHockey folder. This is my AutoHockey folder and this is where I store all my macros. So I'm going to create a new folder real quick and I'm going to name this AutoHotKey V1. So this will be the folder that I will be putting all my macros that I create from now and in the future. But I mean, for me, I have this folder here, but for you, you don't have one. So I'll just make a new one. And to create an auto hotkey file, it's very simple. Just right click, click new, auto hotkey script. And there you go, you're done. All you have to do is name this whatever you want. So for me, I'm going to name this hero hunter combo. Create script. There we go. And to edit the script, just right click and edit in notepad. So the way auto hotkey works is that it works off hotkeys. It's in the name, auto hotkey. When I'm in the game, real quick, I'm going to go back to the game. I have to find a key that I can press without consequences. So let's press E. So E is a key I can use, because when I press E, it doesn't do anything. This is how you start the macro. E is the key that I want to use. Put two double colon. And this is it's as simple as that. So if I type E double colon and I send hello, something as simple as this, I save the file. And when I run the process by double clicking this, whenever I press E on my keyboard, it will send out hello, as you can see. But it can't send the E because the E is here. It's good habit to put this dollar sign in front of all your hotkeys so that you can actually send the key itself so i'm going to run the script again and when i press e it sends hello see it's as simple as that so now you might be thinking i don't really know this language so how am i supposed to code in this language well it's very simple like i said you can use the ai tool right here the way i want this macro to go is i want to do three punches manually myself and then i want to uppercut so i want to left click left click left click and do an uppercut this is what i want the macro to start with I want it to start with an uppercut. So to make it start with an uppercut, all I have to do is send, okay, okay, hold space bar, uh, left click, re release space bar. This is the logic that I want it to do, right? But this is not the correct syntax. So if I save this and if I run it in auto hockey, it will say that it doesn't work. All you have to do is go to your AI tool and say, please fix this auto hotkey script for me and then paste it in it will give you the correct syntax so just copy it go here and paste it here you have to specify auto hockey version 1.1 the older version so i'm gonna save this and i'm gonna run it now and if i go into the roblox game and i press e on my keyboard it does something as you can see so i'm gonna hit three times one two three and i press e on my keyboard and as you can see it did the uppercut after the uppercut, what I want it to do is I want it to press number 1 on my keyboard, okay? So I'm going to put send 1 over here. Oh, make sure, make sure you close the script when you type. 
I'm going to put send 1, okay? But I do not want to press 1 instantly. 1, 2, 3, uppercut. I want to delay for a while before I actually press the number 1 on my keyboard. So I'm just going to shoot a random delay. Delay in this uh, coding program is called sleep. So I'm going to shoot a random number like 500, okay? 500 is half a second. So let's see if this works. So I'm going to go run this real quick. And after I run it, let's see if this random delay works. 1, 2, 3, E. Uppercut, and it used it way too fast. Because it's too fast, I just have to increase the delay. So uh, something about coding is that there's a lot of trial and error. So make sure you just play around. So I'm going to just keep trying different numbers until I get it. Okay, so I found the correct delay, it's 800, so I'll be using the number 800 from now on. So, after I do that, I want to turn off shift lock and hold D on my keyboard to go sideways. So that's what I'll be doing right now. So I'll just add in a send shift here. So I'll press shift on my keyboard and then I'll send D down. So this means I want to hold the, hold the D key down to go sideways, like this. So I'll send shift, send D down for about, let's say... One second. So before I send shift and send it down, after I press 1, I gotta give it some delay. So I'm gonna give it half a second of delay so that it can do the flowing water. And then I'll press shift and press D down for 1 second. And let's see what this does. So after the 1 second, I'm gonna send D up. I'm actually gonna move- I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it to 2 seconds for now, just for a higher number. So let's try and error this until it works. And as you can see, it did the it did the sideways motion. So now that that is completed, what I want to do is I want to press Q and 3 at the same time. So let's uh, after I send the app, I gotta send Q and send 3 on my keyboard. Okay, so send Q and send 3 before I send the D key up. So I'll give you a delay of 500 or 200 milliseconds, and let's see if this works. So there there is a lot of trial and error in this. So let's try now. One, two, three, uppercut. And as you can see, it did the grab. So now that it did the grab, what I want to do is, the moment it grabs, I want to turn back on my shift lock. So I'll turn on shift lock here, but after after D up, send shift. So this will turn back on my shift lock. So I'll be looking forward instead. So let's see if this change worked. As you can see, it, it did the throw forward. That's correct. After I throw the guy forward, I need to hold left click so it, it does the triple hit like this. Okay, if you want to automatically turn off the macro, you can at the end of this put exit app right here. This will automatically turn off the macro every time it runs. So what I'm going to do is, after I shift lock, I'm going to hold left click. So I'm going to send L button down. This is send left click down. And I'm going to send it down for, what, half a second. Let's see if this does a single punch. Run it again. And press E. It did not do a single punch. That was because the delay was too short. So I'm gonna increase the delay a bit. Let's try 100 now. Run it again. Uh, this time it missed because it used Hunter's Grass way too late. So I'm gonna make it use it a bit earlier by decreasing this delay. Let's decrease this to 18. And as you can see, it did the single punch. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make it punch right. And then I'm going to give it a delay of, let's say, 200 milliseconds. Okay, I'm going to try half a second. And I'm going to click again. So half a second, click, half a second, click. Okay. So what this will do is after the single punch, it will do another punch and another punch. I need to do three punches in total. So I'm going to increase this delay to 700 just to test it out. So let's see if this works so far. Okay, as you can see, it did the three punches. The moment I send L button up, send W down as well. And then at the end of this, I'll send W up. And as you can see, it hold W and it managed to do the three punches. So after the three punches, I want to end it with an uppercut. An uppercut is the thing that I made before. So I'm just going to copy this and put it down here like so. And then I'm going to make it wait for the same delay that I tested before. And I'm going to end it with number two, which is little whirlwind stream. So let's see if this uh, code works. And if it doesn't work, I'll just debug it until it works. So let's test it out right now. One, 
two, three, uppercut. Okay, so let's try that again with full HP. One, two, three, E. Okay, in that case, it did not do the uppercut. That means right here, space down, click, space up, failed to do. The reason why it failed is because if you see here, it will do a click and then instantly there's no delay in between the next click. So it'll do the click again. So I gotta add in a delay after this. I'm gonna lower the delay from 700 to 600 because I feel that the punches are a little bit too slow. So let's try it again. Okay, and just like that, the whole macro is created. So, uh, now you might be thinking, wait, what if I mess up the macro halfway and I have to stop it straight away? Well, let me show you a special trick. It's called Reload. So I'm going to add in another hotkey at the bottom here. I'm going to label it to R and I'm going to call it Reload. All this will do is it will reload it in the middle. So if I run this script and if you see the bottom, every time I press R, it reloads the thing, right? That means if I'm using the macro halfway and I want to stop it, I'll just have to press R on my keyboard. So the moment I press R on my keyboard, it stops the macro straight away. And yeah, that's basically the basics of how to create a macro. You don't really need much experience, you just need a lot of debugging, testing, trial and error, try it out here and there. Basically, break down the whole macro into very small steps. If you want more advanced macro tutorials, you should uh, start watching full guides on like other stuff. This is just the very basics of how to get started. Anything else, you can ask Gemini. But right now, I have the macro created, I can copy and paste here. I can ask the Gemini for me. Please make my code look proper for AHKV1. So I'm going to paste it in here, and it's going to give me back the formatted correct code. There we go. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it here, save it, and it will label all the code for me. Ask Gemini, ask Gemini, Gemini is very useful. And that's, that's about it. That's how you create a very simple macro. That's how you get started. Uh, yeah, bye-bye.